Hello, of course you know what this is, it is Pokemon Go and it is already a massive success. I was out for a run on the weekend and I seemed to pass family after family, parents, grandparents and children all out in local parks, around the town, around the city, all playing Pokemon Go. It's a little bit like the Wii back in 2016 that really crossed that boundary between gamers and non-gamers and everybody wanted to play it. But this is a video with a difference. We want to look at what are the dangers of families playing Pokemon Go. What should you look out for as a parent? What should, be, should you be aware of? The NSPCC CEO Peter Wanless recently quoted as saying, given Pokemon's already massive popularity with children, the NSPCC is concerned that basic safety and standards appear to have been overlooked. So we want to see what are the real dangers for Pokemon Go. Firstly, in terms of who is at age appropriate to play the app, it's a little bit confusing. The app's official rating varies greatly depending on the platform and depending on the territory. On the iOS App Store, both in the US and the UK, it is stated as being suitable for those 9 and over for infrequent or mild cartoon and fantasy violence. On Google Play Store, things are a little bit more confusing because in the UK it's got a Peggy 3 plus rating, whereas in the US it has an ESRB 10 plus rating for fantasy violence. The lobby group Common Sense Media add, add in some more details to this picture, stating that only children over the age of 13 should be playing it. They quote privacy concerns, violence, and drug references as things parents should be aware of. The wide variance of this guidance is perhaps a sign of how groundbreaking Pokemon Go is though. And I think to see the wood for the trees, parents should simply be aware that Pokemon Go games are usually rated as Peggy 7 plus, so the on-screen violence is going to be non-realistic and about fantasy characters. Of course, in the real world, there are more considerations because there's privacy concerns and dangers around exploring the local area. Being lured to particular locations by strangers is also something that parents should consider. Another potential danger are unexpected costs. Something that's not covered by age ratings is the ability to make purchases in the app, these in-app purchases. So although Pokemon Go is free to start playing, you can use real world money to speed up progression and in the UK, a single transaction can cost as much as £79.99. In the US, that is $99.99. So that is something you need to be aware of before handing your smartphone or device over to a child. You can block the in-app purchases on the iPhone by setting up family sharing and ask to buy. This ensures that when your son and daughter makes a purchase, um, they first have to get approved by you. That is found in settings, iCloud and then family if you set up that family sharing. On Android devices, you can do something similar via subscribe, family, set up family and then get started. And you can ensure that kids can't make purchases without you realising it and getting uh, an unexpected bill. Of course, another cost is their mobile data use. Because it's constantly polling the location of the player, sending that off to the servers so it knows where you are, this can be costly depending on the phone crack contract that the player is using. If you're on a pay-as-you-go system, that's quite a nice way to limit data use because obviously once it's gone, it's gone. On contract tariffs, then you, you can set up warnings of data use to av avoid, again, unpleasant surprises when the bill arrives. Now, perhaps chief amongst the NSPCC concerns is the sort of stranger danger area. Because Pokemon Go is most exciting about getting out in the real world and exploring your local area, finding those Pokemon, tracking them down, this is made all the more exciting when you come across other people playing the game as well. And as I mentioned, in our local vicinity, everybody seems to be playing. There's a real buzz about it. While this isn't a problem, if you play the game together with your children, if they play it on their own, I think parents do need to consider the potential risks. The position of the player is shared with other Pokemon Go users, and also other players can create lures, which are simply a way to attract, attract players together for a battle, but potentially could be used to tempt children towards particular locations. So parents should set clear ground rules around where children can go when playing, and what they should do about not interacting with strangers in the game. Also, parents should consider that children may be more open to interacting with strangers if they discover that they are also playing Pokemon Go. And again, a conversation about this and some sensible boundaries is a good idea before they go out and start playing. Now, perhaps less obvious is the physical dangers. Po Pokemon Go is a really absorbing game. So while you're exploring the real world, you're also monitoring your smartphone screen to see where those Pokemon are. There's some potential hazards here. It sounds almost a little silly, but I've seen more than one player of Pokemon Go being so absorbed in the game that they've actually walked into lampposts and bollards in our local 
Park, so do keep an eye on your surroundings. Beyond looking a bit silly, there are real dangers here too. Of course, if you're near traffic or taking routes that are less safe, um, you need to be aware of what is going on around you. And again, parents need to ensure that their children pay attention to the world as they explore. Now, there is a sort of a vibrate alert mode, but this doesn't work if the app's closed. So one solution we've been using is dimming the screen and then using that vibrate option to tell us when Pokemon are near. Another consideration that parents should be aware of is that when you're playing Pokemon Go, you have to enter a user ID and an email and a name. So although the app doesn't track other Google account information, it does keep a, a track of this and player locations. Now, one thing that some parents have been doing is setting up a new Gmail account for Pokemon Go to avoid linking their children's play data to a, an email address and the data related to that. This also makes it easier to track transactions and also limit that personal data collection. If you're still concerned as a parent, you can request that your children's details are kept safe as is explained on the Pokemon privacy policy by letting um, the Pokemon company know that the, the player account is for someone who is under 13. Finally, it's worth bearing in mind that Pokemon Go encourages children and families to explore and engage in the local area. Of course, this is a good thing, but it can lead kids to going out and taking different routes and ending up in unfamiliar streets. So even if they aren't far from home, there is the potential that they may get lost. Parents, again, should set some ground rules about how far kids can go before they start playing. When there is a Pokemon further away, perhaps children can take parents with them on the hunt. When going out with a whole family for a longer Pokemon Go hunt, it's also worth taking a battery pack with you to ensure you can use the maps to retrace your steps back home and also that your phone doesn't die during crucial fights. Pokemon Go is quite battery hungry and your smartphone battery will deplete pretty quickly. Of course, as with any trip outside, sensible shoes and some water and some food are also a good idea if you are playing in hotter months. So there you go, there are some things to be aware of if you're planning on letting your children play Pokemon Go. But the best advice that rings out through all of this is play it together. As you can see, our families that have tested the game have had a great amount of fun. Pokemon Go is a great way to engage in your kids, get them outside, but also for them to engage you in the Pokemon world. So do dive in, get to grips with these different Pokemon characters, understand how Pokemon Go works, and you'll find that the children in your family will get more out of the game, but also you as a family can enjoy it. Also, this is a great way to mitigate many of the dangers and risks we've outlined in this video. Simply put, playing Pokemon Go with the whole family is a much safer, much more enjoyable experience, and both you and your kids will get much more out of it. Thank you.